I'm now going to turn to the question of the electromagnetic fields and how they transform when we shift reference frames in using a Lorentz transform. Um, so we wrote the fact that box of A alpha is equal to minus mu naught J alpha. Um, and I made the, the somewhat bold statement that this contains all of electromagnetic theory. Um, of course, you have to include the Lorentz force in that as well. Um, but it does. So we should expect, given that we can write this equation, which is manifestly invariant, um, it should be possible to write Maxwell's equations and relate the electromagnetic fields to, um, to see how they transform between reference frames. And that's what we're going to look at in this, in this video and the following video. Uh, remember, we defined A alpha is equal to AX, AY, AZ, and phi over C. Um, and we defined J alpha as being JX, JY, JZ, and C times rho. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what about the fields? Um, there's no sort of nice space-time components that we had for, for the, the potentials and for the car charge and current. Um, so we're going to have something which is nastier when we come to think about how we transport form them. And let's start from the potentials, because we know what we're doing with the potentials. Um, so we're going to write B is equal to the curl of A. Um, and if we just consider the X component of this, then we get DAZ by DY minus DAY by DZ which you could also write as um, dA, dA3 by dx2 minus dA2 by dx3. And for the electric field, um, E, that's equal to minus the gradient of phi minus dA by dt. Um, so Ex, of course, is just given by minus d phi by dx minus dAx by dt. And notice that we've got time-like and space-like components there. So that's minus C times dA4 by dx1 minus C times dA1 by dx4. And please note here that phi is the electric potential equivalent to V, um, nothing to do with flux. Now, we want this to be a fully contravariant tensor. Um, so we're going to need to change what's going on um, here in the differentials. Um, and that will also enable us to make a couple of other changes. So let's rewrite this as fully contravariant. So we write that bx is dA3 by dx subscript 2 minus dA superscript 2 by dx subscript 3. There's no change there because those are all space-like components and we need to go from contravariant to covariant. The space-like parts don't change. Um, Ex over C I'm going to write. Um, notice that I'm just taking this C here and moving it to the left-hand side. Um, now what I'm going to do is when, when we come to change this part, the, um, the X4 term, there will be a sign change. So this part will become positive. So I'm going to write this one first and then this one second. Um, and so what we get here is dA1 by dX4 minus dA4 by dX1. <coughs> So now we can define something which um, will incorporate all of this kind of thing. We'll write it as F alpha beta, that's a contravariant tensor. Um, and we define it as dA beta by dx alpha minus dA alpha by dx beta. Um, and notice that we've got no, um, no repeated indices and they're not opposed, so there's no summing going on. Um, and this defines what's known as the electromagnetic field tensor we'll write out in just a second. Uh, and, and it encapsulates the entire set of EM fields. Uh, it's a four by four matrix. It's a, a rank two tensor in four dimensions, if you want to think of it that way. It's anti-symmetric, which you can see immediately from the form there. If you swap the indices, there's a minus sign change. Um, and it's actually, there's only six independent elements. So let's see that. We write F is equal to, I'll put the brackets in when I've finished writing it out. We've got zero and then B3, minus B2 minus E1 over C. We've got minus B3, and notice immediately that's the anti-symmetry. Um, there's a zero here. We've got a B1 here. We've got a minus E2 over C. Uh, we now have a, a B2. Again, notice the anti-symmetry. Um, we have a minus B1 anti-symmetry again, minus E2 over C, and then you can fill in the last line yourself if you like. It's E1 over C, E2 over C, E3 over C, and 0, which we could have deduced.
deduced again from the antithymetry. So there are six um, terms which are non-zero and are independent. Um, they can be the upper left, the upper part, or the lower part. The zeros, of course, are zeros, and the other half is just negative of the, far, the other part. So that is the um, electromagnetic field tensor, um, and it transforms using Mu Lorentz transforms, um, but we have to use two sets of tensors to transform. So you remember when we did the four vectors, we knew that x prime was equal to r acting on x. Well, if we wanted to transform the field tensor f prime, that would need to be r acting on f and then acting on r transpose. Um, the reason that we have um, the transpose there is so that we can get the indices right. Let me just write out. So we have f prime alpha beta um, is going to be r alpha, and then we're going to have a gamma. Um, we'll have an f gamma delta, um, and then we are on the other side, r delta beta. Um, uh, and that little fellow over there on the right-hand side, that is, of course, just r transpose. Um, and notice that there is a sum, an implied sum, over the two indices, gamma and delta. Um, I have used gamma to mean 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. In this case, it's purely an index. Similarly, delta is just an index. It's got nothing to do with delta functions. So those are the transformations um, that we get for the, the field. Um, and if you want to, you can go back up and you can sort of convince yourself, if you like, um, that f23, uh, which is um, the second row and then the third column, which is b1, is equivalent to the bx. You know, his, his f23, alpha beta, 3, 2, there. Um, that's just f23 is equal to bx. And you can consider, convince yourself that f41 is minus f14 is ex over c, as we saw um, above. So now that we've written that tensor, um, we are able to do a number of different things with it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to stop the video here because that's done the first part. You know, there's quite a lot of ideas here. So what we did is we started just by noting um, that we want to be able to reformulate the, the fields and deal with them in Lorentz transforms. We use the potentials that we know about to write them, um, to write the fields in terms of the potentials and other four vectors. That gave us this rank two tensor, the electromagnetic field tensor here. Um, that's defined in full here, and now I've just given you the recipe for transforming um, between reference frames. It might be useful, actually, just before we finish, for me to write out the actual kind of transforms explicitly. Um, so now let's say that we're going from S to S prime, um, which is which has velocity. Um, v is equal to v comma zero comma zero relative to s as is standard. Um, and then in that case, what we write is that the parallel component of E is unchanged, um, and the perpendicular component of E is what changes. That goes to gamma E perpendicular plus gamma V cross B perpendicular. And here parallel is parallel to V Um, and perpendicular is perpendicular to v, the velocity vector. Um, and notice that when I write e perpendicular here, that's obviously going to be two components. So if this is ex, then we'll have ey, and then you'll need the y component of v cross b, and ez will need the z component of v cross b. Um, and then you, do, you can do something very similar for b, and you find that b parallel primed is b parallel, and b perpendicular primed is gamma b perpendicular minus 1 over c squared gamma v crossed with e perpendicular. Um, and you can get these transforms um, just by taking this tensor and transforming it in the usual way. It's worth just looking at the form of these. When we do, did the Lorentz transform to the four vectors, we found that the component of the four vector parallel to the velocity is what changed, and the perpendicular version components didn't change. For the fields, it's the parallel component that doesn't change and the perpendicular components that do change. And notice in particular that what we have here is an electric field now has a component of a magnetic field. 
magnetic field is now being affected by the electric field. So when we transform between reference frames, we mix the fields. So really, you can't talk about an electric field without thinking about the accompanying magnetic field. In the next video, what I'll do is I'll show you how we can derive Maxwell's equations from this electromagnetic field tensor, um, which will complete the demonstration that electromagnetic theory can be formulated within the principle of relativity. Um, I'll then have a final video where I give a couple of simple examples of how to apply this.